Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Data Science with Harshad. So in this particular video, I want to talk about learning mathematics for data science. So I keep encountering all these questions across different forums where people keep asking about uh, how much math should they know? Is it really important to learn mathematics to master data science? Uh, so people have this notion that machine learning is all about mastering uh, those libraries uh, like uh, scikit-learn or TensorFlow. Why learn mathematics when you can simply just call dot fit and dot predict and the job is done. So then there are people who want to know how much of mathematics should they learn in order to master data science. And then there are people who are really afraid of mathematics since it's a daunting arena and uh, they want to know if they should pursue data science or not. So part of the reason why these kind of questions come up is uh, because of the broad nature of the term data science that encompasses a lot of different roles and uh, each role has different mathematical requirements. So for someone who is more inclined towards the engineering side of data, they might not need to learn mathematics as such because they are simply, uh, the job is to simply provide uh, the basic infrastructure, basic data infrastructure uh, to the data analysts and data scientists, uh, especially machine learning practitioners in the data team. So, and for someone uh, who wants to master machine learning in general or deep learning especially, they should definitely make themselves uh, familiar with concepts like linear algebra, vector calculus, probability theory at a minimum. So this video intends to make it very clear to all of you uh, about the needs of mathematics, uh, how each of these concepts are based on uh, mathematical foundations. And uh, we're gonna talk about some real world scenarios, real life scenarios that you might run into as a machine learning practitioner, as a data scientist who is more inclined towards modeling and uh, learn about uh, what kind of uh, job interview questions you know uh, debugging problems uh, uh, challenges towards solving domain specific uh, problems and uh, then at the end we're going to talk about the four pillars of machine learning and uh, their mathematical principles uh, that they are based on so let's talk about machine learning and how much of mathematics should you know in order to master data science. So when we talk about math for data science, it boils down to machine learning. Now, what does machine learning consist of? We have three major core components of machine learning that are data, model, and learning. So when we talk about data, machine learning is inherently data-driven. Now data is at the heart of machine learning. The end goal is to extract useful hidden patterns from data. Although the data is not always numerical, it is more useful when it is treated as numerical. We can think of data as vectors, an object that adheres to arithmetic rules. Now, this leads us to understand how the rules of linear algebra and matrix multiplication and transpose operate over arrays of data. Now, when we talk about model, now a model is a mathematical representation of certain beliefs and assumptions. Now, it is said to learn or approximate the process of how the data it is provided was generated in the first place and then make prediction based on that learned process. Now, from general ideas of applied math, we define the functions of many variables that represent certain assumptions from a probabilistic view. So in a regression example, the model approximates a function that maps input to the real valued output, as can be seen in this image where we are trying to predict housing prices based on the number of rooms that the house has. So when we talk about learning, 
Now, learning accounts for the term automatically in machine learning. Each model is characterized by a cost function that we designed to measure how well those assumptions that we made while developing our model correspond to reality. Now, you might argue that all these concepts are abstracted anyway in the machine learning libraries. So why not build over them directly? Now, to counter that, let's look at these real world scenarios that you as a machine learning or a deep learning practitioner would run into on a daily basis. So as a data scientist, you are not only required to know machine learning algorithms, but also you should know how to leverage your knowledge, your mathematical background, your familiarity with those mathematical concepts to build more efficient and complex models. So a great simple example of this is selecting the performance measure for your problem. Now, a performance measure basically gives you an idea of how much error your system makes while predicting. So taking an example of a regression problem of house, predict, house price prediction with the data set that contains many outliers, for someone who just knows that root mean square error is the preferred performance measure, he will simply evaluate the model on that even though the outliers would add large errors as an implication of the squared term in the formula. Now, root mean square error measures the distance between the vectors of prediction and the vectors of target labels. Now, it is the root of sum of all squares of these distances. So how do we do that on large arrays of data, you would ask? All thanks to the magic of vectors and linear algebra. Now, a more efficient performance measure in this particular case where we have a lot of outliers is using mean absolute error as they are less sensitive to outliers as compared to root mean square error as is given in the formula. Now, data scientists at any product-based company will be required to support crucial decision making with his analysis and model results and this need to be well versed with the domain or the field of study. Be it finance, e-commerce, bioinformatics or disease diagnosis, computation heavy domains like finance, banking, etc. require a strong mathematical background. For example, a data scientist working as a quant in a hedge fund who is developing a model to price derivative security should be aware of how log returns, normal distribution and calculus are contributing to the development of their model. Now, traditional statistical analysis is still heavily used in all the research-oriented multi-billion dollar fields like drug discovery which requires you to understand the terms like mean, standard deviation, sampling, bootstrapping, kurtosis, skewness, quantification, etc. Not just these. Now, math serves as the founding principle for all the major industries. Now, comprehending and debugging machine learning algorithms. Debugging a software program is easy as you only have to look into two dimensions, the algorithm or its implementation. Now, it is easier to build intuition for where the problem might be. But in case of machine learning, debugging gets very hard because of the added dimensions in the form of data and the chosen model. Now, your algorithm is either not working or it is not working well enough. Now, these are the only two cases while you're debugging your machine learning model. Now, luckily, we have other indicators to figure out where the bug is. Now, for someone who comprehends these underlying mathematical laws and cost functions well, he has an added advantage to be able to connect one of the dimensions of the parameters of the model to these functions. When you talk about model selection based on their inherent limitations and assumptions, Many a times, a model works really well, but it is not used in the production because of its scalability and computational complexity. Now, learning about the inherent limitation of your training algorithm helps you choose the right model for your use case, even if it is not the optimal model. Now, a good example to talk about here is 
our understanding of the cost functions. For instance, mean square error, a cost function for a linear regression model, happens to be a convex function. Now this convex function is continuous and its slope never changes abruptly, which leads us to use gradient descent as it guarantees to reach arbitrarily close to the global minimum, which is the goal of the cost function. Now, Learning about the shape and math behind cost function also helps us in defining the parameters of the model. For example, while using gradient descent, we should make sure that the features are scaled as it converges very slowly to the global minimum as shown in the figure on the right where the features are not scaled. Now applying for the position of a data scientist does not just require you to know scikit-learn or TensorFlow. You are required to know how a decision tree calculates the Gini impurity at each node or how a cost function of a linear regression model is optimized or what is the decision function for a linear SVM classifier. So here's what Google's data scientist job description says. Now expertise in statistical data analysis such as linear models, multivariate analysis, stochastic models and sampling methods. Uh, so you can make out uh, that these all concepts like linear algebra, vector calculus, then matrix decomposition, statistical concepts, sampling, all of these are very important for you to crack a job interview. Now, let's talk about the mathematical foundations beneath the four pillars of machine learning. So, the four pillars are basically regression, classification, dimensionality reduction, and density estimation. So, from a career perspective, if you really want to pursue data science, especially machine learning and deep learning modeling, you must at least be familiar with topics like linear algebra, which covers vectors and scalars, tensors, and then matrices, probability distribution to quantify uncertainty. Then we talk about scalars and vector calculus that explain gradient descent. So to summarize, we need to learn mathematics to understand the fundamental principles of machine learning, which enable us to build more complicated and efficient learning systems, to create new ad hoc machine learning solutions to tackle different complexities and challenges in domain specific problems, to comprehend and debug existing algorithmic approaches, and to learn about the inherent assumptions and limitations of the models. So this video marks the beginning of our mathematical series where we are going to talk about each of those concepts, linear algebra, probability theory, vector calculus, and other statistical concepts. So if I have answered any of your questions through this video, please give this video a thumbs up by liking the video. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment down below and please make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the upcoming videos on data science. So uh, we're going to start off with the linear algebra and the first video is coming out soon. Cheers.